you're looking at the biggest climate catastrophe that nobody's talking about. So like all of this here, yeah. all of this here is methane. Methane. A powerful gas silently baking the planet. It's responsible for more than a quarter of global warming since the Industrial Revolution. And it's pouring out of fossil fuel facilities for no good reason. We're talking about plumbing, literally. That's right. Cutting methane emissions is one of the cheapest, fastest, and easiest ways to slow climate change. But the companies responsible aren't doing it. And with a few exceptions, nobody's even holding them accountable. What we're going to be doing today is finding methane and working out how to get rid of it. Let's go methane hunting. But first, let's meet James Torito from the Clean Air Task Force, an environmental group pushing for tech and policy solutions to keep the planet from heating. It lobbies governments to capture carbon, cut pollution, and build nuclear power plants. We're meeting Torito in Berlin and taking the train down to northern Italy to search for methane where it shouldn't be. Torito's job is to cross the continent, tracking down fugitive methane emissions escaping fossil fuel facilities. It's detective work that could prove vital to keeping global warming under control. Methane is a gas that absolutely wrecks the climate. Unlike CO2, it doesn't last long in the atmosphere before breaking down, but it's way stronger in the short term. It's so strong, in fact, that over a 20-year period, methane heats the planet more than 80 times more than CO2. You know, if we can reduce methane emissions about 45% in the next 10 years, we can actually shave off almost 0.3 degrees Celsius of warming during the next two to three decades. 0.3 degrees? Yeah, that goes, that just Is shows- Is that a lot? Is that a little? That's quite a lot, uh, certainly. I mean, it slows down the growth of warming, or the speed of warming, and gives us more time to solve the harder challenges with carbon pollution. The problem is, methane concentrations are rising, fast. Across the world, enormous quantities are pouring out of farms, landfills, and fossil fuel infrastructure. The source you might already be familiar with is cattle. Cows have four stomachs that digest food in a way that fills their burps with methane. Quick side note, it's a myth that cow farts are the problem here. Only a small amount comes out the back. Rice paddies are another big source of the methane emissions from agriculture. Together with sheep and some other foods, sources like this make up 40% of human-caused methane emissions. Then there's landfills, responsible for about 20% of the problem. When bacteria break down organic waste without oxygen, they also produce methane. But the source we're interested in is the easiest to fix, fossil fuels. They're responsible for one third of humanity's methane emissions. The gas we burn for cooking and heating is almost entirely made up from methane, but it's leaking everywhere. Offshore rigs, oil wells, gas pipelines, and also the facilities we're about to visit. We're driving to an industrial park on the outskirts of Milan where fossil gas is stored. Facilities like this are a vital part of the energy supply chain that nobody really pays attention to. We've come here to see pollution that you can't see with the naked eye. You could be living right next to a methane leak and have absolutely no idea it's happening. Fossil fuel companies generally aren't too thrilled about people calling them out for polluting. So when Torito turns up at a site like this, he stays outside the security fence and scans the area with a special camera to search for methane. And here comes the big question. Will we spot fugitive methane emissions escaping from the facility? Okay. Yeah, so what you're seeing is gas coming out of the vent stack. This is at the core of what methane hunters do, making the invisible visible. So I literally can't see anything on my phone. Yeah. And here we can see a gigantic leak of a gas pouring out of the top of that pipe. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason my camera can't pick up these emissions. My phone cost a few hundred euros. Whereas Torito's camera costs... 100,000 euros. 100,000 euros. The price tag is so high because the camera picks up infrared radiation at the wavelength needed to see hydrocarbons like methane. And although it can't measure how much is leaking out, the camera does show where the problems are. 
It can see invisible gases. It can detect things that I, as a normal person, am not able to detect. That is mind-blowing. But also, it does kind of explain why this is such a kind of... why this whole industry is getting away with all these methane emissions, right? People do not have any idea just how, how much is leaking out and where it's coming from. The International Energy Agency estimates the world's methane emissions from the power sector are about 70% higher than countries are reporting in their official data. But tracking those emissions is tricky. Even for the people hunting methane. We are not lost, are we? No, we're not lost. <laughs> we're, we went to um, the site outside of the town. We've driven to another gas storage facility a little further away from the city. And less than five minutes after setting up the camera, we can see, you guessed it, another plume of methane. So you're saying that that tall tower over there is actually pumping out more methane than the last one we just saw, right? That's definitely more than the last site we were at. Uh-huh, okay. And we're further away too, so, you know, like, it's a, it's a little bit harder to see. The size of these leaks matters because it turns out governments aren't the only ones underestimating methane emissions. The companies responsible often are too. So you can reliably go turn up at a place like this and you're going to put this camera up and you're probably going to see some methane coming out somewhere. Yeah, especially a site like this. You know, the larger sites, the more equipment you have, the more likely there's going to be some sort of methane emissions. There are basically three ways methane gets released. There are simple leaks, which could be because a screw hasn't been tightened or a piece of equipment is rusty. Then there's the venting, where methane is intentionally let out. This might be done to reduce pressure in a pipe during maintenance work, for instance. The third is flaring, where methane coming out of the vent is burned. Burning methane turns it from a super harmful gas to, well, just a regular harmful one. But often it's done so poorly that raw methane is still escaping into the atmosphere. In 2021, the Clean Air Task Force visited 250 oil and gas sites across Europe. It documented methane emissions from a variety of sources at 180 of them. So maybe if, yeah, some, These like aren't just isolated incidents. Many pieces of equipment were leaking methane when Torito visited eight months previously. Some seem to have stopped. Others are even pumping out more gas than last time. So some of these sources can certainly be fixed pretty easily. Um, you know, we were looking at a valve. We were just looking at a valve that looked like it you know, really could just be tightened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, other stuff might, you know, fixing them, repairing them might be a little more complex to understand mm -hmm. where the emissions are coming from. We asked the facility operator SNAM about the leaks we saw, but they didn't respond to a request for comment. But site operators aren't the only ones responsible. Methane is leaking across the entire supply chain. Before it gets to European storage tanks, it needs to be extracted from the ground and shipped or piped vast distances. That's why we're heading down to La Spezia, to visit a port where shipments of liquefied natural gas, or LNG, are being unloaded at a dock. It's in one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Well, most of the time. The problem is, it's raining, and that means the camera's probably not going to be able to see much methane. And to make matters worse, the park we'd wanted to film the port from has been blocked off by a landslide. Methane leaking from ships is hard to spot, but we should be able to catch it at LNG terminals like this one. So we've had to change plans slightly, and so we're kind of going to just drive around a bit, go to another side of the, of the port, see if we can see anything, hope the rain clears up, but yeah, I don't know, not ideal. The EU is the world's biggest gas importer. Countries like Italy and Germany rely on gas for more than one quarter of their energy demand. And that leaves them reliant on the biggest exporter, Russia. At terminals like this one, Europe also receives shipments from the US and Middle East. But even from our second spot, we can't work out whether that terminal is leaking methane right now. From this distance and these conditions, the rain, fog, wind, and the background, it's almost impossible to see it from, from this distance. So you need to be much closer to, to the source. And here's the problem. Without constant access to the sites themselves, there are kind of serious limits on how well these emissions can be detected. 
Luckily, there's another way to look at the same problem. From space. That's right. The infrared sensors in satellites hundreds of kilometers above our heads are helping scientists spot methane leaking out from under our noses. And they're terrified by what they're finding. In the field, we can see all these like leaky, defective little materials or a tank leaking more than it should or things like that. Uh, but you don't see the key players. This is Thomas Lovo, a scientist who uses satellites to identify so-called ultra-emitters of methane. Satellites aren't perfect. They struggle to see methane at night, through clouds, or above water. But on land, they're picking up emissions that are on a whole other level. Lovo's study found about 10% of the industry's methane emissions come from these gigantic releases. They happen rarely, but they're happening all over the world. Ultra-emitting events come from equipment failing or companies clearing methane out of pipes to do maintenance work on them. And so that giant burst of methane is worth a thousand leaks. And this comes at a heavy price. Lost revenue from wasting gas, lost lives from air pollution, and lost time in the fight against climate change. The study found that four countries, Turkmenistan, Russia, the US and Iran, could save billions of dollars by fixing just these ultra-emitting events. And here's the big lesson I've learned so far. Fixing the industry's methane problem is ludicrously cheap. Fossil fuel companies could cut methane emissions by a staggering 75% using technologies that already exist. In some cases, it's as easy as tightening a bolt or uh, you know, closing a valve. Some leaks are still bound to happen when equipment wears down or workers make mistakes. But what companies can choose to do is find and plug them quickly. How do you deal with the kind of methane coming out of vents and flares and stuff that haven't been lit? There need to be more regulations and closer inspections of what facilities are intentionally venting. It's pre pretty simple solutions in many cases. More than 40% of the IEA's suggested emissions cuts literally wouldn't cost anything. And that's because companies could take the gas they waste and actually sell it on. When you're venting gas, you're losing a lot of gas. That's a lot of money. There are a few reasons for this. Some companies don't know how much is leaking. Some would rather invest the capital in activities that bring shorter term profits. And some don't even have the infrastructure to sell it on for industrial use. But to be completely honest, there's an even bigger scandal going on here. The most surprising thing about all of this is that these methane emissions are just, they're not even illegal. That's a bit that I don't get. These, this is warming the planet and there is, there's not even the regulations in place to stop companies from doing this. Things are changing. Methane. Methane. Slash methane. A landmark agreement to reduce uh, methane emissions. At the COP26 climate summit, leaders from more than 100 countries pledged to slash global methane emissions by 30% by the end of the decade. The European Union plans to introduce new requirements for measuring and reporting methane emissions, as well as spotting and plugging leaks. It's even proposed a ban on venting and flaring. What it hasn't yet considered, though, is setting a standard for the oil and gas it buys elsewhere. Enforcing import standards that cover the whole supply chain could drive changes in countries with leakier facilities. That could spur the changes needed to cut methane emissions globally and buy the extra time needed to stop temperatures rising. If you want to see more videos with solutions to the climate crisis, then click subscribe. We've got more videos coming out every Friday looking at different ways to get us out of this mess.